This is an Extra Special, episode 28, CES 2014, on Friday, January 10th, 2014. And now, they ruin the S-word. Aw, oh, Snapdragon. Dragon. This episode of the Nexus Special is hosted by Ryan Rampersad, Matthew Petchel, and Ian Buck. Man, Las Vegas is really nice this time of year. Is it now? Yeah. Yeah, you would I'm, know. I'm really enjoying it, yeah. yeah. yeah Aren't you? Yeah, vague. Everyone's enjoying it. Yeah, you, you you're, you're still think you're there, huh? Well, wait, are we not doing that? No, no, we're not doing that. that oh, last year. So we're just going to tell people that we're in St. Paul. Yeah, you know, it's cold here. Oh, you know. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. It's not. It's I just, haven't left. snow. I haven't left my house in the last, like, week. Week, yeah. Yeah, I, I, same thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you're on break. Yeah, I'm on break, oh. and it's cold outside, and so I stay at home and do nothing. Nah. Sitting in one chair. Mm-hmm. It's really bad for my one, legs. One chair? Pretty much. One, just one I, chair? I go downstairs to eat meals, and I come back upstairs, and I sit at my computer. No. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Not really. Maybe you need really? two chairs. My my See, I split butt. the difference between two chairs. <laughs> like, uh, well, isn't the difference zero if both are 50-50? No, 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 no. Like, cheek on one, cheek on the other. It, it, it balances out. Well, that's even worse. Keeps them both happy. Exactly! Well. <laughs> I've broken a lot of folding chairs trying to do it on one. You know, at, at CES, there are no chairs. That's not a technology yeah, anybody you innovates around. You know, you're right. In all the videos that I've seen, there haven't been any chairs at all. People are just walking around. Yeah. Standing, looking at things. And... Uh, taking pictures, mm-hmm. recording, mm-hmm. all the things that we didn't do. No. No. Well, we're recording now. Are we? We're recording ourselves. Are you sure? Talking about the recordings of other things. Is this really happening? I think so. Okay. Unless I'm dreaming. You might be. Man, I have a really terrible imagination. Mm-hmm. So what happened at CES? Well, there was a lot of keynotes, and uh, outside from those keynotes, which uh, would be the regular show floor, not a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. I remember last year's thing was 4K televisions. Was there like a unifying theme that, you know, unspoken unifying well, theme? Well, the theme that was spoken of this year was supposed to be the Internet of Things. But do you think that happened? No. Eh. No, I don't think so. That the, So there are things that point towards a trend, but that, that didn't actually happen. Okay. So this year it was just another refinement of 4K TVs and, you know, better software on them, which is horrible anyway. But at least if they're going to put it on there, it's going to be better. So that's good. Have we seen any compelling 4K monitors that don't cost $1,000? Um, I don't know who, who who released them, but there are new monitors that are um, $699 oh. um, that are 28 inches. I don't know who did it, but uh, their, their 4K panels are pretty nice from what I've heard. Okay. They were, they were shown at CES somewhere. Man, I wish I could afford one. Well, they are pretty expensive. You can go to a Mona Price, and uh, they're a little bit cheaper. They're like $599. Okay. Yeah. Or you can get your $300 Chinese special uh, Apple Cinema displays. But but what you have to watch out when you do those, you know, fake ones, mm-hmm. is you won't probably get HDMI because the, the, the cheap HDMI, like 1.2 and 1.3, don't support 4K. You need, like, 1.4. <laughs> and so you have to watch out because you won't get HDMI then. And then you also can't do, like, regular DisplayPort. You have to do some, like, 1.3 DisplayPort, and you'll have to do dual, dual triple DVI. That's oh, That sounds hard. Yeah. I mean, dual link DVI is really nice. Yeah, right. It's, it's the only reason I can do 3D at 1080p. Yeah, exactly. And then you'll need, like, dual, triple DVI to do yeah. 4K. Good yeah. luck with that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we, we have a list of things to go through. Do you want to go through some of I those? I would love to. So Yahoo's first on the list, ironically. Uh, now, why? Because they're important. Are they? They're they the don't Google. do anything. Now, now, let's ask ourselves, why did Yahoo think it was a good idea to not to, 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 to just have an announcement here at CES? Like... They don't do consumer electronics. No. So why would they want to be at CS? Like, what did this get? Because them? they're starting a new tablet line. That's, That's actually the only thing that makes sense. Th- but it's not true. That didn't happen. Then why did they do it? Because search engines, refrigerators. Well, actually, it's ovens. Oh, I was close. Yeah. Um, they have their own line of ovens now. Well, that's because they're baked, but. <laughs> So seriously, what did they talk about? Well, the first thing they mentioned is uh, the fact that Marissa Mayer is still CEO, so that's good. Okay. That's the first thing that happened. She walked on stage. So that's good. That's a good start, right? Well, they, they bought a product that is on their competing platform. In other words, Aviate, they bought it, which is a launcher for Android. Hold on. You're saying that Android is their competitor, but they don't have a mobile operating system right. to speak of. That, that uh, They're doing a really bad job then, aren't they? Shh. What? Obviously, Yahoo is competing against Google in some way. They used to be. Well, who are they competing against then? 
I don't even know what Yahoo does. Well, there's no. They do not. <laughs> they don't do Hotmail. That was <laughs> that was Microsoft. Oh, yeah. no, really? Yeah. Was that a thing? Yeah. No, no, no they Wait. do. They uh, do. They do Yahoo Search, which is really powered by Bing. So, hmm. Nothing. And I think they they still try to do like news on their site or something. Well, and speaking they, of they that, own in Gadget or something. No, no, no. AOL owns in Gadget. Oh, try so, again. Uh, Yahoo owns. Crap. Yeah, they don't own anyone. Okay, fine. Yeah, and not not that anyone knows of yet. Okay. Well, so they they actually have launched another thing. Then they've launched the Yahoo News Digest. Ah. And so, wow. do you do you remember Sumly at all? No. I don't think we ever had it on Android, at least uh, that I remember. Is it some sort of aggregator? It was a thing, an algorithm thing that somebody developed to basically read a story for you and then make basically a tweet length summary of it. It was a, a service called Sumly. Hmm. Hence the summary. Okay. And so it was a good idea in theory. And so what Yahoo has done is they purchased it for an absurd amount of money. So it's an algorithmic and human curated news source thing. Okay. So it, it, what it does is it's basically a Twitter feed in a sense of, you know, headlines and things. Sure. Uh, it's not just from tech. It's from, not just from like news sites either. It's like tweets, photos, things from Flickr, whatever Yahoo has access to sports. They, you know, they have a big sports team. And, the interesting thing about it is, is that once you've read it, it leaves the stream. So you can empty out your stream for that period of time. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Does it over-sensationalize things to increase click-through rates? There's no click-through. Oh, okay, good. So that that's a really handy thing. So if there's no click-through, can they get sued by content creators for, like, you're taking what we wrote and not giving us any anything for it? I don't know if they can do that. Who? The content creators? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, no, I mean, there's no click-through to Yahoo, so they don't care. Like, there's a click-through to the the actual source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, That's pretty cool. It's kind of funny to have a click-through on a tweet or a click-through on a photo. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that doesn't happen very often. But the news stories are still there, so that's good. Yeah. Now, the other thing they introduced, and Matt will love this, is they made a new food news portal. Yeah, because I don't think I would like this so much, because... When I see food on their website, I understand that they're, it's chicken wings, not oatmeal cookies. Like, I can, on Yahoo's website, I understand they're cookies and chicken. <laughs> so one time, I thought, uh, you know, on the Yahoo homepage, they have a like, little slideshow thing? Nope. Okay, well, they do. Trust me. And they were showing off some chicken wings, and I thought they looked like oatmeal cookies. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell. Wow. But the title said, chicken. <laughs> I didn't read it. I looked at the picture. Anyway, it's amazing how you can say something that just makes no sense, but when explained, makes perfect <laughs> sense. And and that it, well, and, it, and it's completely gift. his uh, fault for it not making sense in the first place. It looked like oatmeal cookies. It had that same golden brown cooking style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so f- they're doing a food news portal. Portal. Yeah. So what th- kind of news is there in the food? Well, I say news sector. because what else? What 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 else do you put a portal on? But I don't really know what it well, entails. Well, tell you what new products have cancers and what ones don't. Well, I mean, so it's every week there's a new it's, study. It's it's I, I would oh, call. Oh man, it, they have a, a sort of yeah, video of a wow. woman essentially forward eating, to me. She's she's <laughs> eating. What is she eating? That's not it's that's not oatmeal it's cookies or chicken. Oh, my. So I will put this picture in the show notes because I can that do be our four hundred four page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want to do that. Yes, so please do that. Um, I probably won't, but I kind of do now. Okay. So, so the, the the portal is interesting because it mimics the thing that we're going to talk about next. But the, it, it basically is very image based. It has you know a bunch of headlines of things. Have you ever seen this villain format before? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's there's this, and I don't really know if you call this news, but I would call it news because it's news. Fair enough. Yeah. Now, the more important one to us probably is the next thing, which is their their new tech portal, Yahoo Tech. Mm. And do you remember David Pogue? Nope. He was purchased from the New York Times. He used to be the big Apple writer. He he does other things like specials on PBS and stuff about planets or something. Okay. But uh, yeah, David Pogue is the headlining writer for Yahoo Tech, and it's going to be targeted at the, and these are his words at the middle eighty five percent of normal people. What on earth does that mean? Most people. Most so, people. <laughs> does, okay, does, so does that mean that we're taking normal people and taking the middle 85% of that? Or are we taking all people and then taking the normal 85%, a.k.a. the middle of that? This part. 
Oh, what's the whole timeline? Is that all people yes. or is that normal people? Peeps. Peps. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So, but what do you think about that? What do you think about a tech site that is actively trying to target at the middle 85% I demographic? think they're going, nobody's going to ever go there. I don't think so either. Like, normal people don't read about tech I mean, it, ever. it sounds like a great thing because I want everybody to know about tech. And that's why, you know, we're here. But making it so that everybody can relate to it and understand is uh, a very large challenge that I don't know if anybody's up to it. Well, so again, look at the style. Whoa, oh, yeah. that guy's he has Whoa. a scary face. We'll be talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> Do you know? He could be better he's better than Syracuse already in my No. Book. Uh so this is Yahoo Tech. What do you get out of it? Uh, pictures and there's a car and so let's, I don't really see many words. Let's look well, at this target breach section. So this is what it looks like. Oh, I like how it just transitioned to the to So the it's just article you know, but uh, the rest of the feed is It's still a very there. short article. Okay. And what's funny is that this was originally published at a place called AFP. So are they really just source pulling? That looks what that, that, that seems to be what they're doing. Wow. Slash that does that. I, uh, well there's no way that what's his face is the one who's writing well, all of those I, I articles know. on there. I know, I know. So he he's he's headlining <laughs> it. Yeah, you I'm just going to leave it at there. Please um, do. So he's going to be doing, uh, in addition to his regular reviews of products and regular, you know, editorial pieces, David Pogue anyway, um, he will also be doing weekly Kickstarter reviews. Which is good. Uh, and apparently they're going to work with Kickstarter projects to get, you know, prototypes and betas and access things. So, so that, that he they... actually has a sense of whether they're good or not. Right. Good. But But you know what's going to happen is, so yeah. in the first day... They'll already have met their goal, and then he'll do a review on it, and then they'll do make their goal, their next you know stretch goal in like another twenty four minutes after the review is written. So it's it's really just like kind of pointless in the way because he, it, unless he looks actively for interesting things that aren't popular, yeah, you know, ten days yeah. in or something, it won't make a difference. And I mean, I I would like it if yeah he he legitimately found things that were interesting and good. Um, but I can imagine him just, like, taking whatever is put in front of him and just hyping it up to no end. Right. And, you know, whether it's good or not. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't know what I don't know what they get out of it. Probably not a whole lot. They get people reading their articles, which is ads, which is how they make their money. Well, speaking of that, they have unveiled a unified advertising platform. Whoa. I don't know what that means. They didn't really explain it. That's, I don't know about advertising. Okay, so we have this picture here in the show notes that says Gizmoody... In Badger, oh yeah, the urge, or maybe the verge, depending yeah. on the, if that's a U or a V, yeah. and overload. Oh, so do you want me to explain this picture? I would, ex- yeah, I would explain. Oh, okay, I'd- well, so, so as I mentioned earlier, that David Pogue is writing the site. He's you know the editor basically, and mm-hmm. he was targeting at the middle eighty five percent of people. And he says that Engadget, uh, Gizmodo, The Verge, and uh, Recode, the the new all things D, um, are all sites that are way too complicated, way too technical, and these are what he thinks of these websites. Like Overload is way too much information. The Urge, like I have to have this, uh, or in Badger, like because I don't, I don't know some of the Badgers, um, in Badger, Badger movie, Snake, yeah, sure. um, cows. I don't know. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. <laughs> well, then. So, yeah, there, there's that picture. I thought it was funny. Good. So, that that's Yahoo. Did, now, did you see any tablets, any phones, any no, products? No, not really. Why were they at CES again? Because they wanted to be. Yeah, they wanted to be. And so, they, they tricked somebody into letting them in. Well, I'm sure they... Paid their yeah, way in. Yeah, paid their way in. Now, do you think Trickery that... with money is still trickery. Yeah, I agree. Well then, do you think they could have just had the same event but on their own time? Like, so they did it in the second week in February or something. Would anybody have gone? I'm sure a lot of people would have. Yeah, you're right. The Verge would have been there. Yeah, the Urge, you mean. <laughs> so, I, I, a lot of people would have gone, but do you think people would have cared? Not really. Well, yeah. do people care anyway? No. No. Well, we we have moving on. M- plenty of <laughs> notes on that. So let's talk about T-Mobile, because they were there also. I care about them. I know you do. I have a, a vested interest in caring about them. I also kind of do, but I don't really care that heavily. I care super heavily. Why? I don't want to go back to Virgin Mobile. Oh, ever. well. Well. Ever. Let's, let's talk about that. I never want so, to claim my reward. So at the beginning of their keynote section, they were talking about all their previous Uncarrier events. Mm-hmm. So this is the one they're calling Uncarrier 4. Okay. And uh, I don't remember what all the Uncarrier things were, but the first one was... Uh, 
you know, removing the contracts that are still contracts anyway. Good. Uh, they have their unlimited international roaming and data deal thing. And they have, uh, what was their third one? Paying for people coming from uh, other carriers? That's right? what number four is. That's number four. Okay. Yeah. N- uh, number three? I don't know. It, it, it... Oh, oh, oh. Um, up, switching phones whenever you want to. Oh, yes. Jump. Uh, up, right. Up to yeah. twice a year. Yes. That's what it was. So they had all of those, and now they're introducing their new thing, which is to pay off the early termination fees from other carriers. Yeah. Now, before, so in their keynote, uh, John Laguerre, who is the CEO, you know, that guy. The who, guy with the scary face. The guy with the scary face. Well, so the night beforehand, he was at AT&T's party. Like, apparently they were throwing a party somewhere, and he went and got kicked out. How? Uh, somebody must have recognized yeah, him. Yeah, somebody recognized him. You know, they he just was... saw his face. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, actually. And he he was wearing reportedly his uh, T-Mobile attire, so his you know <laughs> his bright shirt. bright purple pink shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he he basically told the security guards like, if you seriously make me leave and I get kicked out of here, I am going to get so much material and so much coverage tomorrow. And they're like, you 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 have to leave. And he did. Yeah, he he left and he got a lot of material out of it. Well. Yeah. So that was fun for him. Uh, apparently, um, he was asked about what he thinks of Sprint, and he says Sprint is a pile of spectrum waiting be de- to be turned into a capability. So didn't he say that a long time ago, though? No, no, or that, that this, was this recently. Is, this was okay. said at that at okay. the conference or uh, keynote, rather, and um, you know, it was Q and A. He was being asked basically, "Is Sprint really buying you?" And he didn't answer. He said this instead. Yeah, but we. And he know also that went on are. to say that. Well, even if we're bought, T-Mobile is the brand we really, really like. So it sounds like it's not an acquisition on Sprint's part. It's more of a reverse acquisition then. Okay. It's one of those things. So he also mentioned that uh, there were 4.4 million new customers in 2013. That's more than the PS4s. But only 0.2 million. That's a few. A couple. I'm one of them. PS4s? No. Yeah. 4.4 new customers. million new customers. Did you get a PS4? <laughs> no, I didn't. Why not yet. Because it was either that or a phone, and I decided phone. So well, That's probably a better yeah, I investment. I something you would use every day. Hmm, I wonder. Well, I mean, yeah. So he um, also mentioned that there's going to be wideband LTE in certain areas coming soon. Gosh, I hope that's Morris. <laughs> that's all I can say to that. Gosh, I hope that's Iowa. Because Iowa doesn't have T-Mobile at all. Yeah, well, maybe they should it's get some people in Iowa really first. Really pathetic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you know where it has no people? North Dakota. Like, seriously. Oh, no, no, no. no that's one. why they can do the drone thing there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're they're paying off ETFs, so the early tamer nation fees. So the way they're setting it up is that if you have a device on another carrier, so another, like, uh, Sprint or uh, Verizon or AT&T, you can bring your device and get up to $300 when you trade in your device. Okay. So if you bought a on-contract iPhone 5S in October or whatever month that came out, maybe uh, September, you could get about $300 for it, which would be $100 more than the subsidized price you paid for it. Okay, nice. So you're getting more money in some cases than you spent on at that you know, at time of purchase. And that's including the termination fee that you're now paying to get off. Right. So then they also will cover the termination fee up to $350. Per nice. line that you bring over. Oh, so it's three hundred dollars for the device plus however much for right. the early chamber. Oh no! Nice. But on the other hand, if you have a junk phone, so you bought one of those zero dollar, right? You know, like some you know exhibit. Yeah, but those people aren't the premium customers. They want the premium no, no, customers. exactly. But if you did buy one of those exhibit phones and you suddenly want to go over to T-Mobile now, you might have to end up paying more. Uh, if uh, for some reason, well, they'll still pay for the early termination fees. Yeah, but even then you'll you have don't to buy get the money for the phone. Right, but then you'll have to buy the phone. Right, mm-hmm. which is something that you'd have to do anyway. Now it's kind of funny that they're making you trade in the phone, but they kind of have to if you're from Verizon or Sprint. Yeah, because you can't just take that and go. You know, well, SIM card. No, no CDMA. Mm, nope. Unless you had like a Nexus Five or you know one of the nice phones that have multiple bands. So one of one of the things that I considered when I heard Sprint is buying T-Mobile is, mm-hmm. hey, maybe that means that. T-Mobile in like Morris will have nice coverage because Sprint has nice coverage. Oh no, that's a different, entirely different CDMA. Right. Uh, Sprint, you, Sprint is on CDMA, right? It is, but yes. it, uh, it depends because uh, they. M- it, but this can work on Sprint, so there's no. It's a single model. So this can work on Sprint. Ah, I suppose. So it, w- it would work. Okay. Yeah. At least 
the LTE part, LTE part of it would work if they have LTE in Morris on Spring. Yeah, which is unlikely. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't. I don't. To too I don't know what. Uh, you know, who does? Most people have Verizon. Yeah, most people who had Sprint jumped off a bridge. Uh-huh. Wait, what is Sprint's thing called? I don't know. Splat. So yeah, Splat. Right, jumped. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, let's move on to the uh, next sec- section. Oh, Nvidia. I've heard of them. Yeah, likes them. you've heard of them. So what did they do this time? Um. So they uh, they obviously came out with the shield last within year. the last year. Yep. And of course they you know wanted to show off more of that. No, they didn't make another one, right? No. No. How no. No. Sad. That well, I mean, they were just pushing this one for the holiday season. Right. I th- and I'm pretty sure that that deal actually is still valid. Oh, really? You know, getting a hundred dollars mm-hmm. off of it if you buy it with a a you know valid. Mm-hmm card and everything yeah. um so they were demoing it uh, uh pushing stuff to the 4k tvs mm-hmm. um now, because it, it it itself can do that you right. know for for its local content right which android is pretty good stuff mm-hmm. yeah um i don't know how much uh stuff on android is actually you know actually would have like the textures to nothing make 4k literally nothing it. uh but you know whatever. like in a- in android barely b- barely any apps even have five five twelve regular app art yeah 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 mm-hmm. oh well mm-hmm. um so they also were showing off the g-sync technology and did you cover that on 8-bit uh we, well we haven't covered ces on 8-bit yet but yeah we've talked about g-sync when it was first announced which was a little while ago yeah it was about a month and a half yeah. ago. what do you think about g-sync i think it sounds great but it only would really matter if you have a monitor that is like more than 60 hertz mm-hmm. you know like 120 hertz yeah so, so one of the gaming monitors yeah yeah high precision um, so, and and from what I've heard, I you know I read the PC gamer guys' uh, impressions of it, and they were like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I never realized how much of a difference this could make, but everything looks pre-rendered now. Oh really? Yeah. Is it that big of a difference? I, apparently. What games were they playing though? I have no idea. So I'm sure if I played Guild Wars with it, I wouldn't notice. Because some people, some people, because Guild more. Wars is its own frame limiter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, like you know, when I'm playing World of Warplanes say mm-hmm. uh you know i i can see that my graphics card is outputting almost 120 frames right. per second mm-hmm. and so if you know my if if i could get that on the monitor because my monitor can actually handle more than 60 frames per second right. i'm sure you have that the one great. 120 right yep yeah yep so for the listeners who don't know what g-sync is what is it so g-sync is, so v-sync is the current technology mm-hmm. um and what it does is it forces the graphics card to only push a frame to the monitor when the monitor is ready for mm-hmm. it. Um, and that, and the reason that they do that is to prevent screen tearing. So that would be like where you kind of have like part of one image on the, uh, kind mm-hmm. of on the top and then on the bottom, a slightly part of a different image. And, and so it kind of creates like this awkward line that like k- kind of travels down the screen. Right. Yep. <laughs> um, and so that's that. That's to prevent screen tearing, which is, I mean, we would much rather have V-Sync than screen tearing. However, G-Sync allows the graphics card to essentially use exactly as many frames as it needs, mm-hmm. as as it can output, um, and you know, force the monitor to adapt to right. when the graphics card has rendered the next. So frame. it's basically a combination of. So the graphics card can put out X frames, so then you can set the monitor to refresh at that frame rate. Yeah, and okay. and obviously, like the frame rate that the graphics card can output varies right. throughout gameplay. Right. So so the monitor can change it, in real time. Exactly. That's really nice. It is. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it, but no, I don't know where I would find it. No. Well, so, so do you need specialty hardware for that? Yes, you need a monitor that has G Sync built in. Or I know that I know that um, Nvidia has sent like G Sync chips to people who already know how to open up monitors oh, really? and mod them, oh. and they you know have been able to modify existing monitors. You and I probably wouldn't want to touch. Oh, that, I wouldn't though. do it. Yeah. No. Do you know if it's possible to like have an, an intermediate like add on kind of thing? So like, not for the normal no. people. Well, no, but yeah. I mean, like, an add-on. Like, so, like, you plug your HDMI cable into it, and oh. then it to the monitor. I don't know if you could do Probably that. Probably not. No. Cause, because cause it definitely, it would have to just change right, right. the monitor's mm-hmm. refresh rate. Because why would it need to do that when you couldn't do it, just do it in the card? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's too bad. Well, uh, what else did uh, NVIDIA show off? A new Tegra, right? Yeah. Tegra mm-hmm. 5. No, actually, no. it's called the Tegra K1. K1? K1. So they're starting all over. Sure. Huh. But they but they got a K. So it's like a thousand one. No. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so so this one 
What's special about it is uh, they, eight chords. No, twelve chords. No, twenty-four it's chords. It's not. Well, uh, it has a lot of chords, but they're not the chords that you're thinking of. What chords am I thinking of? They, well, you're CPU thinking of chords. like normal CPU chords. Yeah, mm-hmm. like well, good, well, well, tell me what I no, should think of. They they have actual CUDA Kepler cores. Ooh, CUDA Kepler. Yeah. 192 of them. 192, which is what? Like, well, that's basically nothing when compared to a real graphics card. 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but since they're actual CUDA cores, mm-hmm. they can actually run like PC specific graphics. Well, not only are they CUDA, yeah. they're Kepler CUDA. Yes, which is, uh, that is the latest, right? Yes. That's, okay. that's what our 600 and 700 okay. series NVIDIA cards run. Good, good. So 192, huh? Mm-hmm. So what, what are they doing on the, TPU side, anything interesting? Uh, it's it's the same setup as the Tegra Four that has you know four cores and then one for idle thingies. Okay, yeah. Well, so um, apparently in the marketing that Nvidia is doing, is they're no longer saying that it's a quad core processor. Now they're saying it's literally just 192 cores. Mm. That's that's what all the marketing is showing. Wow. So they they've completely. It means nothing anymore. No, it means nothing anymore. <laughs> so so these cores are not used really when you're not. Doing something graphical. It, oh my gosh, are they going to do to the word cores what like the carriers did to the word 4G? Like it um, means nothing now. Well, it still does mean something. It still means a unit of computing. So I think that's okay. Okay. But yes, that's exactly what they're going to do. I like the word unit of computing. That sounds good. I like yeah. the next unit of computing better. Yeah, I know you do. Well, so do we know when these things are going to be available? No. Oh. It's not written down so are in the they document gonna... anywhere. Oh, okay. So do you know if they're going to pull another uh, Tegra 4 kind of Have thing? Have we actually seen anything with Tegra 4 on it so far, besides the shield? Surface RT2? No. Yeah. Right? Oh, yes! Yeah, you're right. Has, yeah. has that come out yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good. been out. Nobody okay. has it. Nobody okay. wants it because it's a piece of crap. It has Windows 8.1 on it. I remember at CES last year hearing about... Vizio's, you know, basically the Nexus 10. Right, right. Except with Tegra 4. And I was like, oh, that sounds no great. Never happened. I don't even know if it's on their website. Like, no. Nobody, nobody talks about it. it nobody anywhere. wants it. The, the, so the, 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 the presence of Tegra 4 in the market was just dismal because the Snapdragon lineup was so, so much stronger. It was. Um, and so yeah. much more prevalent. And after the Nexus 7's Tegra 3 <laughs> debacle, which had nothing to do with them, honestly, is just because they didn't have trim, which isn't their fault necessarily. But everybody blamed the Tegra 3 for sucking. But after, even after I got trim, it was like, you know, this thing eh, really isn't improving. No. Well, once it's ruined, it never gets better. Look at Windows. No, what? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why I need to reinstall the operating system on That's my parents' right. desktop. Mm-hmm. So uh, they are. It's coming in two versions. This this uh, nice t- Tegra Cape one. It's coming in a quad core A15 version. So you know the regular Tegra four style set mm-hmm. setup. But it's also coming in a new version, a 64 bit version with a super dual core. Super. That's literally what their marketing slide says. I don't know what it means. Nice. Well, I think. Oh, but it also still has that third idle core as we all right, love. Right. But. Who knows? Is that one a sixty-four bit? Yeah, idle core. Okay, yeah. okay. I I think if I remember correctly, the the sixty-four bit one is clocked slightly higher. Like it's like two point four four as opposed to like sense. two point four two gigahertz. Yeah. Um, so they can lower the 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 TDP can stay the same. So because there's less cores, they can go higher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. I'm not really I'm sure if I'm impressed because Tegra four failed. So this is probably not going to go too far. Yeah. No. On the other hand. I, I did hear that they did some partnership with a bunch of car vendors and that they're going to put this K1 chip in a bunch of cars. Really? Apparently. Wow. That's what their plan is. Huh. Whether that happens is yet to be seen, but that's what I heard. Okay. Mm-hmm. I also, uh, we don't have it written down here, but uh, I, I also know that NVIDIA announced that they are partnering with uh, a bunch of um, router manufacturers oh, really? to make yeah like real routers routers that are specifically built for streaming Dragus? to the to the shield you know in order oh, okay. to make i don't i don't think there's anything special about them i think it's just marketing yeah but wouldn't it be nice to have a router that can actually run a real operating system maybe what well it runs on android or something and then you can uh you know does i don't think they do well no but they could make it they could make their own routers that do something different i suppose 
Yeah. Yeah. I th- I think they're just, you know, um putting their brand on some high end routers so that people know, mm-hmm. hey, these are high end routers. You should go buy these. I would never buy it. Yeah. It sounds scary. No, I would get them. An NVIDIA router, like what is it gonna do? Display something? Well, no, it's it's not like NVIDIA is claiming that they made them. It's made by ASUS and then they just put slap I an know. NVIDIA sticker on it. And call them swords. They go very well with a shield. Actually, indeed. Although it's not, I I wish they would have called the shield the sword and this the shield. Oh, I get it. Yeah. It oh nice. my goodness, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't understand what you were going for with swords there. I was like, what? I don't know. Maybe they should call it the mace or something. All I was thinking was like, he's trying to beat me. <laughs> oh yes, yes. <laughs> with I mean, a that's, sword. That's, that's the only thing I would do to you with a sword. <laughs> that that happened once. So let's talk about Intel now. Right. A different chip vendor, but a nice one. So what what happened with Intel? Oh, a uh, new headset. A new headset. What is it called? Jarvis. 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 Isn't this kind of overused? No, 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 no. Jarvis is so used. I think it, this it, is actually a reference to Iron Man. This has oh, nothing to do with Ingress. Don't worry. Well, of course it doesn't. But <laughs> like nobody knows what that game is. Would that be crazy? <laughs> yeah, it would be. No, but I I feel like this this uh, Jarvis name is overused. So tell me about the headset. Well, um, you get a little bit of Bluetooth. And little Android, and uh, it's, I don't know, uh, not pretty much like all the other headsets. Except that all the other headsets are just things that I, you know, are a microphone and a and a speaker so it, that it, I can ex- use my phone as a phone without having to touch it. But that's exactly what this is, too. I mean... Well, it, no, but this sounds like it has actual, like, voice commands and stuff. Well, yeah, it's only because doing of the app. things. Well, yeah. Yeah. So your phone is still... Yeah, it's the phone that's still doing it all. Yeah. Yes, but no, what, well, what I'm saying, other Bluetooth headsets are literally just a microphone and, you know, like, there's no paired app. It's okay, just right. It's just for using right. the phone functionality. I'm not talking about anything else mm-hmm. that the smartphone can do, just phone calls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so this, they're, they tried to make this, like, a big deal, but they didn't do a good job because yeah, it was yeah. literally just a Bluetooth headset. And, uh, and it looks horrible. I wonder if you can get the app and then just any. Uh, I didn't look. So they showed it on an Android phone running 4.2.7. Yeah, they have and, the uh, um, Q10. Wait, did you just say Android Android 2? Po- what? I did say that. Ew. Seeing if you're paying attention. Uh, no, so they did show it running 4.2 point something. So that, I mean, it, you know, they, it was a real Android device, but they didn't say, like, if you can get the app in real life or what if, if this was ever going to happen in real life. But basically, it was kind it of like, like a, a mini prosthetic arm. Right. That's what it looks like. But it's in your ear. That's the problem. <laughs> Put a link to that in the show notes somewhere. Okay. Um, but so it, it's kind of like a Google Now kind of setup, but it's... It's trying to be glass without the glass. Exactly. Which is that maybe that's a better thing to be. Maybe that that's more useful. If they can make it useful. I guess. I don't know. I'd still rather have glass. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to see things. I just want to hear them. So uh, tell me about Edison. Edison is something I still don't fully understand, but I do understand what what an SD card is, and they're they're small little chippy thingies. And apparently, that these people at Intel have made their own kind of like a Pi, like a crappy little computer, but everything is on a size of an SD card. Like you have your Wi-Fi, you have uh, like Bluetooth, your Bluetooth, some everything. storage apparently, some crappy Linux distro. And an app store is coming, so they can have their own Intel app store. Yeah, that's right. So Edison Everybody needs an app store. So Edison is look at it. It's so tiny. I don't I don't know how much you remember of last CES, but last CES they introduced the Quark platform. This is the Quark too. Well, this is using two quarks. Two quark. Two quarks. Um, <laughs> it's dual quark. Dual quark. <laughs> yeah, it's it's dual quark, and they are calling this a Pentium class computer on the size of an sd card oh no i remember pentium well you know that's not bad if it's that small that's not bad if it's that small i agree especially because it has no heat heat dissipation other than its own size which is like Mm -hmm. none so that's pretty good pentiums get pretty hot so this is a really good job if that's the case i also love it how when when they said that it's the size of an sd card i was imagining not like an SD card, literally, but like something about that size. No, this this thing is in a plastic mm-hmm. card that is shaped exactly like yes. an SD card. And the stupid corners. It's got the seat. notch. Yeah. yeah, that's what they're going for. So it, it's actually really nice. So the guy was just on stage. He got done talking about his stupid headset, and then he pulls out. Oh yeah, here's the real thing that we're going to talk about now. Um, so that's nice. So it's using a 22 nanometer dual quark setup. I don't know what that means because I've never seen a quark before. Uh, it runs some Linux, as you mentioned. Built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Don't you think that's impressive? I think that's impressive on its own. 
so that if they can build Bluetooth that small and, and, and the Wi-Fi that small and somehow have it power efficient enough to to run, I'm impressed. Right. Yeah. Wait. How do you how do you get power to this? Thing? I don't know. How do you you no have one... to plug it into something, yeah, right? Yeah. But okay. what I don't know. I mean, it's the size of an HDMI port. So right. I don't know. So, well, maybe just plug it into your HDMI port. Maybe that's good enough. Maybe it's just like tiny little pins, like you know the ones that yeah. you get to your motherboard from the front of your case, mm-hmm. you know, kinds of things. Well, it probably could power itself over an SD card slot. Right, but like there's, they're talking about like putting this thing onto clothing for a, a like baby's clothing. Well, that's and... that's what the idea will be eventually. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you get power to it? I don't know. Well, well, we'll find out when they make it for real. Now, I like the idea of it though because I hate Raspberry Pi and crap because you can't program it. You can't do anything. It doesn't have a real operating system. Without Wi-Fi, what can you do? The Raspberry Pi B or whatever has Wi-Fi and everything. Yeah, but it sucks. It's so slow. You can put a real operating system on it. What, you can put what are you talking it. about? It's not real. It's slow, but it's yeah, plenty real. It's not real. It's as real as twenty five dollars. Yeah, I don't know. How Plus much do you think this will cost? Thirty five, wasn't it? I don't know. Raspberry Pi was thirty five. It could be anything. I'm thinking taxes. Um, let's see. Well, based on my knowledge of uh, SD cards and how much <laughs> they cost, I am going to go with um, about fifteen dollars for the thirty two gig version. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, you're <laughs> absurdly optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, so what do you think about this in, compar- to, in comparison to something that we do know about, like a Chromecast? Like a Chromecast. Oh, wow. The Chromecast is actually exactly the same price as a Raspberry Pi, isn't it? I don't know. Is it? Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah. Well, okay. if they want this to be competitive with the Raspberry Pi, mm-hmm. they would have to be- meet that or beat that. Yes. But I don't think they'll go lower. I think they'll go higher because it's Intel. Cheap? What's that? Yeah, who knows? So I, I'm I'm thinking around 50 to 80, maybe even 100 if they have multiple versions. Wow, really? I'm Okay. It'll never gain the traction that the Raspberry Pi has. No, but it's much more useful if it's as good as they say it is. Are they ever? As good as they say they are? No, they're probably Intel's not. Mm. pretty good. Yeah. They're not like AMD. <laughs> How many cores? Half. How many transistors? <laughs> All right, that's what I meant. Yeah. One third. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, McAfee, our favorite. Okay, so... <laughs> Do you know how there's a huge stigmatism when you say that word? Like, everyone thinks crap. No, nobody thinks that. I think really? cocaine. Only people... <laughs> <laughs> you think of cocaine. Yes. Well, well, you have a problem. You're one of the one percenters. Yeah, you're one of those. You're not even in the normal 85 anymore. <laughs> Nobody's I've targeting for I've never been there. <laughs> well... Yes. I got well, a 33 on my ACT. So we know well, Intel bought them and stuff. Um, yeah, now, now, I don't remember when that was, but it was quite a while ago. Yeah, but now... They're rebranding, so people might actually, you know, take them seriously again. It's now Intel Security. So that sounds reasonable, right? I would buy Intel Security. So by rebranding, you mean they're not actually changing the logo at all? No, they're not changing the logo at all. But the name is no longer McAfee. Exactly. Okay. But the, the M Shield will still be there. What does that have to do with M security? M for in- Intel It should have been a red shield with a yellow S, like security, like Superman. Like, it would make sense. Yeah. The, man, there's no M's in there at all. I, no. th- I think that might be, like, trademark. Oh, crap. Copyrighted is it? Or is so- it? Oh. Well, I don't know. Uh, That's Superman's business. S means hope. <laughs> what does it's SS true. mean? Death. <laughs> I, I, actually, I think I, I, we could go for this. Yeah. One S, hope. Two S's, not hope. You're right. So, so what? It, what is this coming on? So it's... Apparently, it's not going to be targeted at regular computers, and I don't understand how this works. Apparently, it's going to come free, though, with every mobile device, but I don't understand how Who's that works. mobile device? Exactly, because it's not going to be on iOS, I can tell you that. It's not going to be on Android, because uh, what Intel is in that. What? Yeah. A laptop? Well, I mean, like, is Intel that a mobile device? does make mobile processors, right? But that does anybody implement them? Nobody uses them. Right, so it's not going to come with them if nobody uses them. So what's the point? I don't know. So do they really mean laptops when they say mobile, though? Like, yeah. I assume that's what they mean. Uh, they can't have. They can't do that. Why? But I think, that, they I, can. I think that's what they mean. Like they define the word ultrabook. I don't want them to put McAfee on my. Well, it, it, desk, it, it just laptops. comes free. Like you can get rid of it if you want to. Oh sure. Mm-hmm. How do you yeah. uninstall it? You root the processor by chipping the left corner off when it's upside down and counting to three. And making it look like an SD card. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right, so oh, so so ninety percent of the surface of the die area is McAfee now, and the, the, <laughs> the spokes are in the shape of an M now. Oh, I think it's great. Yeah, that is great. So they're uh, releasing, or they're they're showing off gimmicks also called Real Sense. What is that? I have no idea. So it's 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 two things. It's basically their interpretation of uh, motion, leap motion, kind of. 
Oh, okay. So it's kind of like that. You can manipulate objects with your hands with a camera. Mm -hmm. Um, They didn't show it very well. It's not going to be in products. It's just a gimmicky thing. Real sense is what they're calling it. Uh, The mineral supply chain. So apparently to make a processor, you need fancy pants minerals. Makes sense. Uh, A lot of sense. They don't exactly grow on trees. It makes real sense. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And uh, they don't grow on trees. Apparently they grow in conflict zones around the world. And apparently they have worked really hard to make their products conflict free. So the the phrase that you have in here in the in the show notes is conflict minerals are leaving the supply chain, which just sounds like Black Ops, you know, <laughs> like code speak, you know. Well, the, the package is in the Santa sack or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's in the Santa sack. <laughs> yes, because that's totally Black Ops speak, right? <laughs> Isn't it? I've never trusted Santa. He never brought me what I wanted, what I truly wanted. He, that's beard op. Now. <laughs> They've, they've also were talking about their their new dual OS support. So they're going to be supporting, and this is primarily based, obviously not on desktops. It's primarily like notebooks that have the dual form factor kind of setup. So okay. like Windows with a lap, with a keyboard or Android without a keyboard. But it's what they have is they're going to introduce a button or a software switch to t- transfer between Windows and Android. This is so ironic. Why? Because the like. Microsoft was trying to take over that dual form factor space with Windows 8 and going, you want the desktop? You, you can want have it. the mobile? You can have yeah! it. Yeah! Buy RT. Oh, wait, don't actually. Well, it is kind of ironic, but it's also interesting that they're not doing it in a virtualized manner. They're doing it in a literally one is going to sleep and the next one is going to run. Mm-hmm. So one gets pushed into their solid state drive enclosure and then the other one just takes over so they say they can have it switch within three seconds to four seconds now android has never started that quickly for me ever no no but it's not starting it's just resuming oh so the both are running somewhere concurrently but one goes away to sleep mode and the other one comes back okay so yeah i guess now apparently these are still army like they're not x86 based as far as i can tell right right yeah yeah. which well android would Android isn't x86. But, the, but ever. Intel has made an x86 version of Android? And, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. They did that at last CES and they had it running really well. Um, so they, they can totally do it. And, and honestly, if, if Windows can be made into an X or uh, an ARM section, yeah. then, then they can go in reverse. It's easier to code things in x86. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm really impressed with it yet, though. Like no. I don't, I don't know if I would ever need. I I would never Windows and Android at the same time, but not at the same time. Not really. I mean, since I've gotten Windows out of my all of my devices, save my desktop. How ironic! What do you mean how ironic? That's well, where all of my devices except the big one. Well, yeah. I mean, that that's where Windows belongs on the big one. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It doesn't belong anywhere else. Now like, Matt would say, of course, that it doesn't belong anywhere. Well, if I could switch to Linux, I would, but I can't. Would you really though? Yes. Linux looks horrible. I am okay with that. No, you're not. If I had, yeah, if I can get away from Microsoft for good, I, I would. I, I would, would keep paying for real fonts. Mm, I suppose it's very important to me. Well, the only fonts that I ever see are in my browser, anyway. Yeah, and you're gonna get really horrible looking fonts in your browser. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Like it'd be like living in the entire Steam app constantly. <laughs> it looks horrible. <laughs> okay, let's let's go into Sony because this is something that you we'll would know. Come about. back to Steam later. <laughs> yeah i don't yeah, guess it's, so it's another stuff yeah um so as we briefly mentioned earlier sony uh has told us that they sold 4.2 million ps4s uh by december 28th it's, it's weird that they didn't just give us like the year end they probably number, didn't know but yeah I and guess. they probably just stopped after that point too like 800 sales per hour and then 20 you know, like right after uh, Christmas, you know, like and it, so they decided not to. Yeah, like what's it. the point? Sure, okay, um, but yeah, so that's that's good. That's actually way more than. Um, no, do we know what the Xbox, Xbox ones? Sold? Yeah, I think it was three million. Okay, so so much for the fastest selling console ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think the that number disparity? What do you think caused that price or feature well, set? Well, so the the funny thing about it is that. Um, even if Microsoft had had more, I would have been saying, well, you know, the PlayStation 4 isn't even out in all of the areas that it's going Mm -hmm. to be out in. The Xbox One is already available everywhere. Like the, Um, uh, PS4 isn't even in Japan yet. 
Yeah, no, right. that's funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I would say that it's the price. Okay. But, you know, and the fact that I, I don't know if everybody is of the opinion that I don't want my Xbox watching me all the time. Doubt many people are even um, thinking of that. Yeah. The, 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 nobody in that middle 85 would even know what that is. Mm-hmm. Well, the middle 85 would be easily swayed into going, oh, it's watching me. But at the That's same, bad. But at the same time, they wouldn't even know that it has a camera. Like they wouldn't. It stares at you. Well, let me rephrase. They wouldn't it's, even think. It comes with a connect. You can't not have it. You cannot plug it in. No, you can't. It won't work. Yeah, it you... it won't. It refuses to function without the connect. Yeah. I was always under the assumption you could just you know not plug it in. No, that was the Xbox mm. 360 model, but the Xbox One model, which is funny to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what if it runs out of batteries? I have to it doesn't, put batteries. It doesn't run out of batteries. It's, it's connected. Plug- it's a connect. Yes, and it's it's a big old bar. Yeah. Like literally like huge in front of your TV kind of Yeah, thing. I've seen the connect. Like I... it's gigantic. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's it's connected by a cord, so it's not going to run out of batteries. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> well, um, I, I think it's really interesting that the PS4 sold so much more when, you know, Microsoft tried so hard to, you know, appease people left and right. Yes. Yeah. And it still didn't work. The yeah, so the problem with that I think is they were trying to sell to everybody mm-hmm. and Everybody don't want video game consoles. Like, despite the fact that they're right. trying to sell it as a media device, mm-hmm. and you know you can watch all of your movies, but you I can, can already do that with my thirty-five dollar yeah. Chromecast. Exactly. So what then? They're they're competing with too much now. Right. And yeah. and they're losing. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, three million yeah. units is That's nothing good. to laugh at. But um, well, so did you? Um, this isn't a part of CES, but did you read about the Nintendo DS 3DS sales numbers from last quarter? I haven't been paying attention. So, thus far, since the lifetime of the 3DS, so it's not even just a quarterly sale number, okay. the lifetime of the 3DS apparently has sold 11.5 million units. Okay. Now, last quarter, as you just read, that the 4.2 million PS4 units were sold, and they're at least twice as expensive, if not more. So, they already sold a third of the 3DS units in just a quarter yeah. over the whole lifetime of 3DS in general. So, does that mean anything to you? Like, handheld gaming is waning, or PC gaming well, so is I, still consecutively I, I, I good? I don't know what any of the numbers have been in the, you know, handheld gaming mm-hmm. world ever. Um, you know, personally, I've I've owned a Game Boy Color mm-hmm. once, uh, years and years and years after the Game Boy Color was a thing. So, um... Also, I've never owned a console, but, you know, I actually pay attention to those. Um, right. Yeah. I feel like the 3DS is definitely something that, um, like, more kids have them than kids have PS4s. Mm-hmm. You know? So and, far. And that will, that will, I think that'll always be the case because kids are on the bus. Kids, you know, right. go over definitely. to their friends' houses. Kids, you know, they, they, I suppose kids do stay at home a lot, but like kids want to be walking around and you know do, do this they thing. Really? And, yes. Okay. My sister can't sit still. That's weird. Um. Well, if you sit her down in front of the Wii, I suppose she will sit still for a while. But um, you know, she gets onto the computer to go play Minecraft. She gets distracted by other stuff. I thought you were gonna say Minesweeper. No. <laughs> well, if I could raise my sister to play Minesweeper, I would. That's impossible. But that's not a game. I played Minesweeper when I was a kid. I'm so good at it. Look that at how game. you turned out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in the 85. percent No. <sighs> what were we talking about again? Well, we were talking about oh, why, why yeah. the PS4? Right. Um, like, do, do you have any thoughts? No. 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 I, I don't know. I just don't think the uh, 3DS is a captivating platform. Yeah, it's a Pokemon platform. That's all it is. That's when my brother bought it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I um I don't know what if it was the Verge, I don't think it was, but it was one of those, you know, tech sites that write about stupid crap. And they they were saying, So uh does it, have any of you bought the uh two D S or three D S to play Pokemon? And it's like, Well, I would, but I don't think a hundred and sixty dollars is really a good deal for one game. Yeah. But the kids don't care because they're just like, I want a 3DS and I'm going to yell at my parents until I get one. But what's the difference between that and a PS4? Like those, like, well, the, I mean, the, other than the price difference, but the kids are definitely going to be able to convince their parents to buy a 3DS before buying a PS4. Mm-hmm. Also, the parents will see what is marketed for the 3DS versus what's marketed for the what's PS4. What's marketed for they're the 3DS? They're going to say, oh, for the 3DS, Pokemon. That's it. And uh, Mario, whatever, whatever. Mm. Are those really Luigi's marketed? Luigi's Mansion. Okay. Um, I mean, but those are the games that you see out there, you mm. know? Like, even if we're going to go into third-party stuff, you're going to see, like, uh, Phoenix Wright, um, 
uh, yeah, uh, Ace Attorney, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and those those are very cartoony. They're very cutesy. Mm-hmm. Those are very you know parents would be willing to buy those for their kids. Right, right, of course. If, if they look at what's marketed for the PS4, they're seeing Killzone. Well, they're seeing Forza. Forza. Do you uh, remember what the um, yeah no well whatever. Do you remember? I have. Do you remember what the sales numbers for the Wii U were most recently? Nothing. I looked it up. They weren't even popular. Like, weren't they like six hundred thousand units or something? Very low. in in a the last few quarters yeah. together. Yeah. So the Wii U is failing here, and the PS4 is succeeding in just one quarter. So, but the 3DS is also succeeding. It's succeeding where, where the Vita but, is not. But that's true. But but the PS4 is more expensive still, and they're going to win harder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like the the games that you're getting for it are also more expensive, but they're also much more substantial. Right. Yeah. I don't understand this DS thing. Like, it doesn't... It, it, it feels like a failed product to me. I... Yeah, I would never buy it. No. I can understand why other people would buy it, though, because they might not have the best phones, and they're never going to get the best phones. Right. The way that I would One for day soon playing games. will happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about the uh, streaming service. Sure. The cool thing. Yeah, so um, they bought Gaikai quite a while ago. And then didn't have any plans to do anything with it when they were making the PS4. We always had our suspicions, though. Yeah, well, they didn't want to tell anyone. But they have told everybody now. Yeah. And they're calling it PlayStation Now, <laughs> which is... Uh, Horrible name. Eh. I don't know. Whatever. I haven't thought about it. Um, so it is for streaming currently PS3 games mm-hmm. to your PS4 and PS3. And I don't think that Vita is part of the beta yet. No, it isn't. But um, That will but, come. But Vita will be part of the launch this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're also going to be adding, you know, PS2 games and PS1 games Which is to great. the library. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because... And apparently they're going to add TVs, tablets, and phones sometime. Yeah. But I don't know what that's going to do. I was really hoping they're going to add PC. Because if that was the case, then I was never going to have to buy a console ever, and I would just be able to, you know, play last generation games on my PC and now, not have to worry. If they were to do that, what, what, how would they lose out? Like, I guess they would lose out on the console sale. But if it but was they that, don't make money off of that in the first place. Well, not now, but they will eventually. Hardly. They'll still like make they're some. selling they're selling it below the manufacturing cost. Yeah, now, but they won't always. Right, right, yeah. They will make money off of it eventually. But as long as that PlayStation Now is a subscription service, I guess uh, they could make money off of that. If they, they could easily. They did go a PC route there. Yeah. That's an interesting idea. Never going to happen. That, when I first heard about this, and I, I believe that they did say that, yeah, PC is a possibility on this, I was super excited because I was like, this is exactly the direction that Sony should be going in order to get money from me. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. It's funny that I get excited about giving money to people. No, that's great. That's how you should be excited. <laughs> you should be excited to give money to people who get, want to give you great things. But, right. Yeah, uh, most yeah. Most people don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, so um, do we have an idea of how much that would cost? Or No, they haven't said anything about prices for the subscription Do we know anything. how much Gaikai cost before it died? I, was Gaikai even I used? I don't know. If I don't it think it ever was, had a product. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, it was setting itself up to compete with OnLive, but I don't know How if they ever OnLive? actually launched. Well, OnLive, OnLive was a buy a game, you oh, know, was it? and then you get oh, access forever? to streaming that game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well, uh, Sony also had some phones. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yes. yes. The Xperia Z1S and Z1 Compact. Yes. And the Z1S is exactly identical to the Z1, but with more storage. Yep. And then the Z1 Compact is actually also identical to the Z1, but smaller. but smaller. I think it's a it's a f- four point three. Four, yeah, yeah. So that's a good size, and that's what I always wanted the Nexus lineup to be like. So they'd have a small phone and a big phone, mm. priced accordingly and nice. But they didn't do that. And the nice thing about like the Z1 Compact is, unlike most other compact versions, they they actually didn't you know strip take... it of all the nice features. Exactly. So it has the same waterproofing. Mm-hmm. Same, or well, I guess it's water resistant. I. Th- I think it technically is waterproof up to however much, but it's like, it's an impressive amount okay, of good. waterproofing. You never get that in most places. No. So that's good. And it also has the same camera. It has a nice shutter button from what I've looked at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it has that knob in the middle. Looks nice. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a pretty nice uh, small phone. Mm-hmm. But of course, it costs a comparable amount. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, understandable. Well, it is, but I need that to be in the Nexus form. Nobody does the Nexus like the Nexuses do. Except Google. And we can say it like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do we talk about some other stuff? All right. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, you have some LG stuff listed there. Yeah, because I didn't want to make an LG section. Wait, terrible. did you make two other stuff sections? Oh, my goodness. Apparently, okay. I did. Nice. Did I do that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Somebody did that. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. So, let's talk about LG. WebOS. It, Wait a minute. Now, I don't know how this is possible, but I know it is. HP sold off, more or less, WebOS to anybody who wanted it. Like, it's it's it, it's open source and sold off, apparently. I don't know how that's possible. How do you sell something off and then open source it? I don't know. But they have the open source WebOS and the real one. And apparently LG got it. So they're going to have WebOS-based smart TVs. And it's going to use the same card and slice UI. Was that UI any good? So it, it made switching apps really nice. But on a TV, you don't have touch input. So I don't know how it's going to translate. Okay. Uh, I mean, I saw the pictures. And so the slices are basically like little like diagonal rectangles that have the name of the app or whatever. Okay. And then you, you know, toggle over to it and it expands into a full rectangle that's more of a parallelogram. Okay. And then you can open up that card and it, you know, turns into the app or something. So I guess it's okay. But it's not like any other interface that I've ever seen on a TV. Maybe they're using the Snapdragon 802. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. So That's also another stuff. That is. So they are they LG is saying that this WebOS system will be in at least half the TVs they released this year. Wow. Now, that's released this year. That's not necessarily they sell this year. So all the old ones won't get it because they're still not. selling those, which is pointless then. And uh, of note, they have an OLED 4K TV at 77 inches. Now, last year you said 4K was the big thing, right? Yeah. We saw tons of 4K televisions where we had never seen any before. Right. And so we'd also seen tons of OLED TVs, but we didn't see most of them at the same time. Most were either OLED mm. at 1080 or 4K at LCD. And I, I think that most of them were not curved. Right. Most of them weren't curved. And so this year I'm seeing a lot more b- both at the same time kind of thing. So you can you can get your OLED which is great because you can get real blacks and real whites mm-hmm. and you can now get your 4K and you can get your real pixels. <laughs> blacks and whites and pixels. Real. What more do we need? Nothing. And um, now of note, now this is unique to all the presentations I've seen. LG demonstrated something that wasn't just regular Nexus tech. It was washing machines. LG demonstrated new washing machines. It was so nice. Did they were, they, were any of them game changing? They use less water, twenty percent less water nice. than a traditional wow. washing machine, and okay. they they had a nice display on them, I guess. Like you know, that's good. Yeah, were they LEDs? I need. Uh, I, need to have I LEDs. couldn't tell what it was being lit by, but it, it was a nice display. Nice. It is consumer electronics. It is, but it's not Nexus tech. And we should get excited about it, I guess. Take I, our money. I would love to have a new washing machine. Mine is sucky, mm-hmm. but I can't afford it. Dinosaurs fifth... roaring sometimes. That's a that's a dishwasher, but yes, I agree. Heard... Oh, they actually demonstrated a new dishwasher too, but I didn't write about it. <laughs> no, but uh, you know, I I find it really hard to buy a fifteen hundred dollar washing machine, where I find it much much easier to buy a fifteen hundred dollar computer. Right. Yeah. Because I I that's where our priorities are. It really is. Yeah. Being that we use our computers every single day and... I mean, I use the washing machine almost every two days. Or three days. You go through a lot of clothes. Well, I mean, I don't just wash my clothes. That's whoever throws their clothes down here. Oh, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. You know, family-wide. Oh, is that that what your job is here? No, it's not. You're just sitting here in the basement and go, oh, look, new clothes to put (laughs) in the washing machine. I guess I'd better get on that. Yeah, exactly. But then I never remember that dryer part, so (laughs) it's not a work. Nice. Yeah. Got to got to use Google now for that. So they also made. I do. I do. Yeah. I go. Listen. Okay, Google. Remind, remind me, me yep. in like an hour. To now, does put it the clothes... often for you put the remind me word word text? It, it used to. Okay, so it doesn't do that. It to doesn't you? do that anymore. So it still they, does it to me because it hates it. me. Really? Yeah. Weird. Mm-hmm. Well, so uh, not Google. LG. LG made the G Flex a real product, and they told us which carriers it's coming to. Sprint, AT and T, and T Mobile, no Verizon for you. Oh, so sad. And and so they 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 really made a big deal in the presentation about how important the curve is. Say that it, again. The curve. <laughs> they, they, it feels better in your hand. It can take better pictures. It looks better to the eye. It can take better pictures well, because it's curved. <laughs> so when you hold it from the bottom. It it angles it up a little bit to correct for your natural tendency to hold it down. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant! It's engineering at its finest. It's it's marketing at its finest, at least. 
Tell me about Valve, please. Right, Valve. Um, they're doing... So they actually kind of took over the the gaming end of CES news. Which is great. Um, yeah, like, so who they, else was? They... Gabe Newell came out, and he, he had, he like, actually about in the Sony, 30 I mean, um, seconds. Gabe Newell was in the uh, Intel uh, really? presentation. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, he he must have talked for he brought, longer than... No, no, no. He was really there for, like, four minutes. And he brought out, the like, one of the Steam Machine boxes. Okay. You know, uh, you know... Presumably but, running something on from Intel. Presumably. But it, it, he, he just held it. He didn't actually even play any games, he didn't show any UI, well, he didn't do not. anything. He just came out, said hi, and then left. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what he did at Valve's Great. event, uh-huh. too. Um, but they, so they've announced 14 of their hardware partners. Oh, 14? Yeah. I only had 13 listed. Um, yeah, one of them wasn't Secret. like listed until later, and it was one that I had never heard of. Uh, um, a lot of them I've never heard of. Uh, yeah, actually, so, so they run the, the, you know, list from, from famous ones like Alienware and Digital Storm and Falcon Northwest. It's funny because I've never heard of any of those things. Well, okay. I mean, I'm Alienware, obviously. Uh, I, yeah, exactly. Um, to completely unknown. But I mean, I, ones. I know Gigabyte and Zotac, they're in the list. Right, yeah, but you know them not as, right. you know, complete, uh, well, compo- or they're component manufacturers. Uh... Oh, I, I can do this. This is what I can do. Yeah. There we go. So you know them as component manufacturers, right, not course. whole computer manufacturers. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, okay, here's what I have personally to say about the Steam machines that we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Great, but I have no reason to buy any of those because they're all $500 or more. <laughs> like, right. if they made one that was just for streaming... What's the point? That would be great. No, okay, well... What's oh, do the you mean point? streaming a game from your computer? Exactly. Yes, okay, yes, yes, yes absolutely. Yes, yes. I would play the crap out of that. Because what is the point of buying a, a five hundred dollar plus Com- Steam machine that won't even be good as your computer? Yeah, that yeah. is presume pr- predominantly running Linux and can only run the like two hundred or so right, games. Those certain games, yeah. Out of the two two thousand plus, I yeah. Don't know. Um, that, that is a great point. Yeah, and so man, if they did that, they'd win. Th- yeah. Exactly. Like huh. we're we're at this point now where it's the race to the bottom for so everything. Maybe they could just put an eight hundred two in or a uh, Tiger K one, <laughs> and, and that would be good. I enough. think it would still probably have to be x eighty six. Well, what about the K one? Because <gasps> oh yeah, you're, you're it won't be x eighty six. It'll be sixty four bit. Mm-hmm. But what, does it matter though? Like and they have, they have Linux distros that can run on it. I'm sure uh, that yeah. Hand, but... I'm sure that they could just put some mobile Intel processor. In oh there, yeah, of course. You know. They could put that uh, new. Adam, the successor to Adam, which is called something, and I can't remember. Right. Yeah. Well, but it's the new one. It's like the Z three thousand thing. The ones that they have in the Chromebooks or not? No, no, no. Those are Celerons. No, this okay. is a new Adam. Oh, it's a new one. It's really good. Apparently, it's in some Windows computer somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think the streaming would make um it a very attractive if it was like two to three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a um, what do you, what is this called again? Chromebook. Chromebook. Uh, Valve things. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I would compare it more to the Chromecast in that case. Okay, you know, yeah. That, but, but specifically for games. But I don't interact with the Chromecast physically, so I guess it's. And you a can't bit stream different. local content. Mm, well, you wouldn't be necessarily. You wouldn't really be. You wouldn't interact, interact with, with it, with it but, physically. You'd but, be holding the controller that is specific to that device, and then that device would be pulling content yeah, from one I of know. your other devices. But I know. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Now I also find the whole Chrome, not Chrome, Valve Steam machine proposition weird too. Because if I already have a computer to, mm-hmm. and I already had Steam, why wouldn't I just use my computer? I have no interest really in playing on a TV. So, well, uh, you don't, but a lot of Steam users do. Do they? Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you the, sure? Like that is the entire reason that Valve started doing this was because Gabe Newell was like, okay, we've got a lot of users here who are saying like, I love the things that I get through Steam. You know, I love the games, I love the deals, I love the community, I love all of this stuff. But I don't really have a good way of doing it on my TV. Just hook up your computer. Like, why well, yes, understand the problem? But the UI is not good for TV. But they fix the UI. They have the big picture mode. Like, what, exactly. That's what they're doing here. Yeah, they're but doing what's the pic- Steam machine part of it then? It's it. They're building specifically machines so that are meant for putting in your in your Living under room? your yeah under your television. Uh, you know, I can in just your put a cabinet. computer in there. Yes. You can. Anybody can. If and, you yeah. play games, you can read a piece of paper. This is an easier way to do it. Those middle 85 people. Yeah. That's Ugh. that's what the CES is about, apparently. I don't that's, know. It's the middle 85. Last year was 4K. This year is middle 85. I like that. Yeah. Okay, then. So, do you think the 14 partners now will make a big dent? Is that happening this year? Like, are they going to sell? Yeah, they're coming out this year. Um, And what do you mean by make a big dent? Because they've... Well, people buy them. 
they've explicitly said that they're not trying to like get new customers out of this. They're just selling to the people who already are invested in Steam. Well, they're going to fail miserably. I, you need new people. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, if I, Matt doesn't buy one, it's not a good product. I, I know that they're going to fail on my part because Crap, I don't have a television. That means the Nexus phone line is horrible. He didn't buy a Nexus. I got a 7, Nexus 7. Those were delicious. Yeah, it's yeah. a Nexus phone line. Well, he's got one now from yeah, last year. Yeah, but he didn't buy it. He bought it from you. He didn't buy it. I just gave it to him. I do this a lot. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah there, there is one Domino's royalty feature. Yeah, ah, but that, that was going to happen one way or the other. Like, <laughs> when I don't steal the cash for it. That's right. What? <laughs> like, oh, look, $20. <laughs> no, it was more than 20 but yeah. That was like, great. <laughs> that's good. So let's talk about... Oh, um, no, Acer. No. Let's talk about Acer. Completely Acer. off topic. So... Acer had a big event, and I only sat through some of it because it was kind of boring. And as soon as they got past this particular thing, I kind of just stopped caring. But it is their new and most fantastic thing ever. It is the D3000 or something. It is a 4-in-1. I don't even have 4. It's a 4-in-1. I don't have 4 devices. How am I supposed to do a 4-in-1? So, it is a Windows laptop. Okay. It is a Windows tablet. It is an Android laptop and an Android tablet. The heck? <laughs> so I was expecting desktop to be one of those. Well, I guess you can make it into that too. It, it, so basically, it, uh, it 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 has the tablet plus dock form factor. So it, you know the extra keyboard kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And you can it, you know it's just like any other tablet that anybody else makes. Uh, you know, does Acer make that Transform Infinity thing or is it somebody else? Uh, Asus is, it, is okay. the Transform. So it, it's just like that, but we can run Windows and android at the same time so it's exactly uh, what intel was demoing right and that's here's an implementation see so how much that will suck i don't think that counts as four well they're calling it four like the guy was very very energetic on stage like you can watch the video and he was yelling at the audience developers no well no they're they're cs people they're anti-developers right give me paper i will write journalism they're anti-developers <laughs> journalism that's right <laughs> Uh, you want to talk about, uh, Snapdragon 802? Sure. So, the 802, which is a higher number than the 800, which is the one that we have in our uh, current phones. Yeah. Uh, our current top of the line Nexus, Nexus 5, 5 yeah. phones. Uh -huh. Um, it is going to be the premier Snapdragon processor for TVs. For TVs. For TVs. Televisions. Yeah. So I don't know if this means if the, you know, the 802 is actually more powerful or less powerful than the 800. Well. But they're, they're putting it in the same lineup, uh, you know, number wise as the 800. So that would lead you to believe that it was more powerful. It could also just mean that it, it, it came out after the 800, you know? Well then. That's not true though, because they have the Snapdragon 410. Which is a 400 derivative. But the 410 came out after the 400, right? Yes, it did. Yeah. But it's weaker. Exactly. Okay, so the four, so the 802 probably just means that it yeah, came out after the 800. I don't know. I don't like it. Um, and yeah, so basically we have no idea what the, the relation between this and the 800 are. Well, I can tell you. But it's it's targeted at, I, I believe, smart TVs, right? Yes. So it's it's basically the product the, the the part the component that you would pick as a manufacturer for your tv normally when you are a smart tv vendor you just pick some junk off the chinese street corner yeah. processors here so that has the apple logo on it yes right 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 yeah, and yeah. bodies there yeah bodies there road here but not really so here here's what uh the wikipedia entry says here so the current generation snapdragon 800s uh, I'll, I'll pick the one that has a bunch of stuff in it. So, like, the S4, apparently. It has a 2.2, or 2.62... 2.26. Whatever! Numbers! Uh, it has the Create 400, so it has a bunch of, uh, graphics. So, the 802 has the Adreno 330. So, it has less graphics than this does. Wow. So, 802 is worse. Like, it... it Are you should, no, it, Adreno 330, the other one says Adreno 330. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, what's it's the this? same thing. Oh, okay. Well, it has a slower clock speed. It's uh, apparently the same architecture. Uh, it has the same AC Wi-Fi in it. Uh, so the only thing that's different is it's clock slower. And this is comparing it to the S4. But it's it's a it's eight it's eight hundred in the S4. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, eight hundred is part of the S4. No, I no, no. Uh, Galaxy S4. 
Ah, see how ah, Qualcomm ruined the I word see. S. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now there's also the 805, which was released in November, I think. Uh, well, or not at least really, announced. Not, not yeah. released, right? Right. And and that's supposed to be the fancy pants one with the Crate 450 running at 2.5. That's the big one. Mm-hmm. That's also capable of 4K display. Yeah. Okay. So this, I guess, it does make sense the 802 number because it is it is indeed. It's not faster, but it's better. It's more capable. Yeah, yeah. than the 800, and it's le- it has less graphics power than the 805. Right. So it makes perfect sense. But it's still weird. Yeah. I'm confused about why they're not, like, uh, putting this out for phones at all. I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm sure somebody will figure it out eventually. Okay. Like, you know, maybe this will be in the dollar bin eventually. Could happen. I, I, yeah. I just don't like what they've done to the lineup. So... When the S4 line came out, Qualcomm said, we're not going to have all these SKU numbers anymore. Instead, we're going to have simple numbers. We're going to have S4, S5, S6. Like, as the generations go on, we'll just have an S for Snapdragon and a new number. But that didn't happen. Yeah, they lied. They lied. They broke reality completely. Oh, well. Yeah. Still angry. That's why they don't get our sponsorship anymore. That's that's well, no, we uh, kind of lost their sponsorship. <laughs> right, so yeah. why don't we talk about AMD and their their new stuff from CES? Oh, very oh, small, well, very small presence this year, but they still talked about stuff. Looks like they tried. They're they're uh, doing a free alternative to G Sync called FreeSync. And wait, how does this work? It doesn't have proprietary hardware. Instead, it relies on products implementing the standards. That sounds like something that we should be doing anyway. So apparently, according to AMD, the standard has existed for at least a long time. <laughs> That's right. For for the uh, reverse for, V-Sync? For, for variable sync of frame rates. Okay. So exactly really? what G-Sync does, variable syncing you know, of the frame rates, uh-huh. and apparently the standard has existed for a long time. But nobody's done it. Apparently nobody did it. And AMD's going to work on doing it. Okay. Apparently. Well. So it still requires so- proprietary hardware in a sense that... It needs new hardware. But, but it's it, not proprietary. It's right, a standard. It's, it's a standard, which is probably proprietary. No, so it, no, no. it took NVIDIA yeah. going, we're going to do this proprietary thing that we just came up with for, just a, came yeah, up with the... for AMD to go, hey, let's use this standard, guys. Well, isn't that like CUDA, though? Like CUDA is NVIDIA's you know, fancy pants compute platform, whereas uh, AMD uses that open one, open... GL, no. Yes, I don't know. OpenGL is software. Yeah, right. But that's it, CUDA is a programming language. Also, it, it's a oh, okay, it's true. a thing to do. You know, parallel computing. Sure. And there's an open something or other. I forget the word. Yeah. But AMD has their open one. It's open. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like Nvidia is always like that. Like you're not oh. talking about Mantle, are you? No, no, no. That's because that's else. an API. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's exactly. So this FreeSync thing isn't out yet. They they don't have any plans on or like any like firm hardware pl- partners or anything. They don't have anything. Yeah. No. They just wanted to say this because it was a good time. So basically G Sync is actually doing things. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But at least in, in AMD seems aware that their competitors are beating them. <laughs> I mean, that's a good start. So why don't we talk about AMD on the Windows platform? Sure. Now, you What other platform are they on? None. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't, they're not even really on the Windows platform anymore, honestly. Now, let's pretend that you had an Intel laptop and it has the new dual boot OS. Sure. It has Android and Windows at the same time. Mm-hmm. Now, you know what would be better? What would be better? To actually have them legitimately at the same time and not like the Intel way, which is to boot between them. AMD's method is to virtualize Android completely. I kind of like... Having them dual booting better than virtualization. So what AMD is offering is complete a complete stack for Android apps that will run alongside the Windows apps. So they have two methods for doing this. They're going to give you an x86 chip, just like always, okay. but they're going to also embed an ARM chip inside of it to run alongside, and it'll just do some magic to... Uh, that sounds like a better... Actually, that does sound like a better implementation. To, to be there. So it, if, if that works, that's great. And so people were asking, so how would that look? So it'd be just like it, the, the Android apps would be presented as Metro apps, and you click it, it opens in an Android style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. I like that. So that, that's apparently the direction they're going with, and I, I like it. They didn't show it, like, working. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see, 
also on the gaming side, Oculus Rift was... They uh, have a new product yeah. thing. Or a new version, I guess. It's yeah, not a new product. It's called uh, Crystal, Gr- Crystal Cove. 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 Yes. Um, sorry, I almost called it Grove. It really should have been Crystal Core, because it makes sense. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, but so, so the new things in this version of the prototype are they now have positional head tracking because uh, they put IR dots on the on the headset and they have a little sensor that you know sits in front of you and senses where you are. So it's kind of like uh, connect on the so, outside. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, okay. but it's a very, very, very cheap version. Right. Um, since they know that you're going to have this thing on your face, they can safely just you know have a sensor yeah. that specifically senses that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the the new. Uh, display. We don't know what resolution it is exactly. We're we're assuming that it's higher than it used to be. Now, what was it before? Like it was really low. It was really low. Um, I think it was like twelve eighty by six hundred on each eye. So it's not even twelve. Well, per, then? per eye. So, so isn't that doesn't that cut it in half? No, is that, no, that's that's that, that doubles okay, that, that doubles, doubles the it. the width at least. Um, or something. Anyway. Um. Uh, so this new display also is an OLED display, and it has uh, something called low persistence, which means that the LEDs in the display only light up for a fraction of a millisecond during that frame, and then they just turn off until the next frame, you know, is ready. That's really interesting. I've never so heard is that of OLED? anything. Yes. Okay, yes. that's why they can do that. And and apparently, like even other OLED displays don't do this because mm-hmm. why would they? Yeah. Right. Um, but the Oculus Rift uh, is taking advantage of this because apparently it uh, cuts down on like motion blurring mm-hmm. and uh, juddering. Which it's kind of funny. Are... I think it would do the opposite. I don't, I think it has to do with like how our eyes mm-hmm. perceive things. Um, now, does that mean the frame rates change or anything? No, I think it's just it it changes when you get to see the frames. Okay, you know. Okay, so like, it's frame. It's fra- it's framed, but the frames are not there when they're not, you know, in between. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, and so, so apparently, this is like what has been causing all of that nausea in oh. in some users. Actually, thinking about it, it makes sense. So, the longer the uh, the light is on, the longer the image stays before yeah. you. Yeah. So, by turning them off faster, they go away faster too. Yes. Low persistence. Y- yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the images persist lowerly. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Lowerly. Yeah, they named it well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only when you think about it. Um, oh, and then the last one. I, I kind of like this last one. Razer's Project Christine. So Razer has brought quite a few really weird, like, out-of-the-box uh, concepts to CES before. And a couple of them have actually become, you know, products. Uh, and I'm curious to see if Christine will become a product because Christine is a completely modular um, computer design where they take all of the components stick them in these proprietary cases where they are liquid cooled with mineral oil and the and the, the ports for all of these for all of these components are then exactly the same and you just plug them all into this one backbone um and so this this makes upgrading easy peasy lemon squeezy for your middle 85 percent wow that's pretty people. good yeah um and to go along with this they are considering doing like a a subscription model type of thing where um, the, uh, so, so with this prescription model, you'll like choose what tier of, um, uh, computer you want at any given time. Mm-hmm. And then, so if you, if you choose tier one, you know, like you want to have the best of the best of the best mm-hmm. at any given time, then, you know, you will pay for, you know, whatever, however much it costs to get the best of the best at the current time. And then you pay however much a month. Right. And whenever there's like, say, a new graphics card that comes out. Which happens. Yep. Yeah, they will, they will send you a new graphics card. You unplug it, plug in the new one. Send on the old and one. Presumably they resell the old and, one. Yeah, probably they okay. you know refurbish it and then send it off to somebody who's in tier two. And, right. You know that makes sense. Um, and so it depends on all how much it costs. Exactly. Per month yes. Yes. Or per and period of time. None of this is you know uh, even like like if it was a hundred dollars a year. So like or if you you bought your first card and then it was a hundred dollars a year. You know yeah. What I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. So if it was like that, that would for, be reasonable for tier one, so the highest tier. Like I would do it, and you get one exchange per year or something, right? I think you get an exchange whenever whenever a new component comes out and they well, get it ready in the case. Okay, fine. But if they did it in such a way like 
it's kind of like jump or uh, AT and T splat or okay. sprint splat, whatever. But so you you pay the f- cost to get the first one, and then you pay some month amount per month or per year or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you get one exchange that year or that period of time. Okay, I I, I could I could do a hundred dollars a year after my first card. So yeah. like my my six seventy here is great and all, but the seven seventy is even better. Exactly, I would be okay paying just a hundred dollars this year to go get a new one, mm-hmm. and the next year going to the eight seventy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I would be okay with that. That sounds like a good model. So it's a speci- it's a it's an enclosure that they put the card in. That's yes. not just a card. Yeah, yeah. How it, does that yeah. work? So, um if you if you like look at some images of it and we should probably put uh, at least one image in the show notes. If you tell me what it's called it, again. Uh, Project Christine. Um so the these enclosures are um they're they're kind of like shelves in a shelving unit. Um they Oh, know, okay. Yeah. And and you plug It's external. Yeah, yeah. So all, they're all, like I said, they're all cooled by themselves, you huh. know, with mineral oil. Um, and so because the the outside of all of these, like some of them are longer than others, but you know they all have the exact same plug that plugs into this backbone, mm-hmm. um, which is you know like the wow, frame those of the are quite unit. long. Um, like I think the bottom one down there is the power supply, yeah, or maybe probably. oh no no I think that's the pump for all for all of the, oh, the mineral oil, oil okay. that goes through all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and. So, you know, as you can see, the, you know, you can take any one of those and unplug it from there and plug it into a different slot. And, you know, um, man, like, so you know, a, building and upgrading a computer is easy for us, you know, and never seems very complicated. But that is literally plug and play right there. It is. However, it's very j- vendor specific. Like, nobody else can make this unless it becomes a no, standard. It, exactly. Exactly. So you are trapped in that respect. And that's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Now. I was under the impression it was just a card, not some kind of enclosure thing. If it was just no. a card, I would love the program. Just, what do you mean? Like, just for video cards then? Or? Well, whatever components they wanted to sell me in this particular way. Right. But if it had just been a single thing I can just plug in myself instead of having an enclosure thing in a weird mm-hmm. tower, I'd be okay with it. I can't that. imagine you being able to do it that way, though. Why? What's the difference between, like, so I I, uh, I buy my card from Razer, my, my GTX 670 or whatever. Oh, and sure. And then I send it back a year later with uh, an exchange for the 770 or whatever. But how do they know that you're not just going to, like, I don't know, sell that one to somebody else then and not send it back, you know, next Oh, well, then I don't you... get, then I, when I don't send one back in, I can't claim it. Like it, it's a it's a fine system, right? Yeah, yeah. I I feel like it's definitely more secure, at least for Razer, to have this proprietary. I stuff. I don't think the security should be in the proprietaryness. Yeah, derm that, is good. That's very bad. Like it's a technical derm in that sense. Yes, but I mean, but it's a derm that also provides a service of being plug and play, which that's is that's great, which is what everybody needs. But does a person who needs I mean, plug and play really need a six seventy or seven eighty? I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, okay. Sure, that's what they all say. And, I'm, and I mean, I feel like the concept for the hardware, for the modularity came first, and then them, you know, they went, hey, this would actually work pretty well for a subscription service. You know, I don't think that they came up with the idea of having a subscription service and then went, well, how are we going to protect ourselves? Mm-hmm. Well, let's just make a modular thing. I don't know if they probably went that way first. I don't think it was protection first. Yeah. 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 It's probably like, let's make this modular first because it looks cool. Exactly. Yeah. It does look pretty cool. Yeah, like it. it does. But I can't imagine doing that. Like, how much do you think this whole rig costs then? Uh, I, It all depends on what's inside it. And I have no idea what's inside it. This looks pretty big. So a lot. Uh, like a lot. Yeah. Like Mac Pro style. Yeah. A lot. $3,000. Space model. It doesn't model. look like a trash can. Though. Man. So no, could, it looks more like an alien. Tr- we could have a trash can and a shelving unit. And <laughs> what? what's next? The bed? Or the, the Oh, mm, great. Mm, the cot. <laughs> for Matt, I like my cod. I know you do. Or uh, a hammock. Mm, what would that actually be like? What 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 device would that end up being? Dude, I had if you had asked me before now, is anybody ever going to make a computer that looks like a trash can? I would have said, "The heck are you on?" Well, I mean, I'd, I've always wanted one that looks like a trash can because I always wanted like a little R two D two to sit on my desk. Yeah, but. you could make you could program your Mac Pro to to you could put like uh, some servo things under it, and some wheels. <laughs> and you could make It'd it be cool. You could make it turn. And then watch it and then watch it roll off of your desk. <laughs> and it won't be damaged. It won't be damaged. It's made out of uh, aluminum. 
No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, shiny it is. plastic. No, it's no, not. It's not plastic. It's not an ounce of plastic it, in so it. What? So you know the how the whole uh, thing is metal. Yeah, the, the whole the, the thing little, is metal. Pl- you know the, ri- the the ventilated ribs like on the top for uh-huh. the, I always thought it was plastic because of that, but it, it's it's carved, it's laser yeah, cut Yeah, it's it's all metal. You how do they see, make it shiny? It's you, a paint. You got to see the uh, video oh, of them I'll making it in a clean room. Okay. It's, yeah, it's it's really well done. But so you know it's the same shiny paint on cars. Oh. So it's not plastic, it's shiny. Right, my car isn't made of plastic. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, yeah, your yeah. car isn't particularly shiny, but you know, like really fancy, if like I cleaned it off, it forty thousand dollar cars, like a Prius, for example. That's sure. kind of shiny. We keep coming back to those Priuses. This guy I know has a Prius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a pop filter here. <laughs> Turns out. So uh, CES this year. Oh, what do you think? A uh, couple other things though. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Not in the show notes. Yeah, I refuse to put things in that note. Well, I'm gonna kick you out of those show yeah. notes one day. But, um... So, you know, Google, those uh, people that we haven't really talked about much. Because they, they didn't really have a they, big they presence. They pledged to fix YouTube. This. Uh, oh, did they fix YouTube this time? Yeah, they're, they're going to make 4K streaming a possibility with um, this new uh Not VP9. on my bandwidth. Yeah, it's going to be cool. But either way, it's not real news. Um, so, like, you know how we said that Yahoo is a fake competitor of Google? And kind stuff? of. Like, what else but, are they? But let's talk about a real competitor of Google. Microsoft? No. Apple? Vimeo? There was this huge story that broke, and you didn't put it in here. And I can't believe you didn't do it. Because it had something to do with CES? Blockbuster? Yes, it so, um, Mozilla partnered with Panasonic, and they are making uh, Firefox OS TVs. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't think it was very interesting. So, do you know how we always watch the Mozilla crap on their website? Like, their their product videos? Yeah, um, yeah. they're very the funny. The CEO of Panasonic was saying how cool it was. And he was the one doing the talks at CES. Was it better? Yes. Okay, good. But much better. Um, either way, so... Um, so, um, do they have plans to actually deploy these in America? These or? are immersion. American. They're coming out. Uh, they're going to be great. Did they, they also have prices? Also, a new line... Maybe? No, no prices oh. yet. No, they announced the partnership. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Did this have to do with the 4K YouTube, or was this separate? Yeah, separate. 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 Oh, okay. Story. I was still thinking about 4K YouTube. No, Stories we don't on. necessarily lead into each other. So, TV, if, TV. If, uh, if there was a Firefox TV, what would it look like? Do they have, like, a uh, picture or anything? So, you know, Panasonic makes TVs already. Um, so, this is just... Um, they're kind of rectangular. They are, most of the time. <laughs> uh, they're not full screen, or one-to-one <laughs> ratio. <laughs> See, I... Full screen wise makes sense. No, Square it doesn't. Rectangle. No, no the I, whole world agrees with me. I saw a DVD that actually asked us before we got to the main menu, "Do you want full screen or widescreen?" And I was just like, "Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that in forever." But nobody calls it that. But everyone does. Yeah, but those don't exist. Either way, so um, Panasonic, I really liked it because um, he can't get in on the Android or iOS because they regulate it so much. But so um, yes, yeah, so Android is so regulated. Well, I mean, if they wanted Play Store access, they, they wanted to make their own little it's marketplace. A TV. Thing. Well, they can't right. Make their own ecosystem stuff. But, yeah, you can. Um, they said that Firefox OS will help them deploy, and anyone can compete. I don't know. I don't think that's going to take off much. I'm still just going to plug a Chrome Chrome stick into it. Yeah, honestly. No, but these are no, no. You love smart TVs. You have one. I hate it. The smart TV aspect of that smart TV. But what is if horrible. it was Mozilla at the core? What if whenever you turned it on, you got a cute picture of a fox? Well, that would be great, but the problem is... It's what like, if you got this fox? Like, this is what they decorated their wall Don't as. turn Too bad. the monitor. Oh, no. Oh, no! He's doing it. I know. Okay, I see it. Thank you. So, the the thing I have an issue with is not the OS, Ooh. because it doesn't really matter. Like, there's no OS on the Vizio TV, like, per se. It's just a UI. Like, what OS does it run? I don't know. Right, yeah. Um, the problem is... It's not... Mozilla. You know. No, it, the problem is it's not fast. So when I like use the remote to go to the next menu, it takes a lot of time. Like my UI needs to be very fluid, and regardless of what OS that provides me, and buttery. Uh, if that's what they want to provide me, yes, I would also take silky, uh, whipped, <laughs> or creamy. <laughs> is that like whipped cream or yes. like okay? What other kind of whipped is there? Uh, when you're head over heels for a girl and you do everything that she tells you to. What? Yeah, what? That's called whipped. That's being whipped. Urban I Dictionary. I have never heard I've never heard that usage before. I'm really Ur- impressed. Urban Dictionary. I, I'll do it later. Yeah. And also, they announced a new line of Firefox OS tablets. Oh, did they? Yes. And we actually do have specs for those. Put those in the show notes, they have please, a, so I can read them. They have some new in-focus uh, screens on their 10-inch uh, tablets. Um, it's their own super way of having a super screen. Now, who's it's, the manufacturer uh, on this? Secrets. 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 Super secret. Um, 
1280 by 800 pixels, uh, mm. 24-bit color, 16 gigabytes of storage, 2 gigs of RAM, has NNG, and mm. possibly the oh. next model will have AC. No, oh, that's great. So should we have a price point or anything? No price points yet. Of course you don't not. need it's the price CES. points. Yes. You know, some people did launch price points. Half of the Steam machines didn't. But, but it that's only Steam. weighs 580 grams. That sounds like a lot. It's a TI-83. Eh, plus. Yeah, yeah that's okay. good. Yeah. That's fine. Is it's seven inches then, right? No, it's nine point seven. Oh, by... so it's a full size. Wow. Okay. With wait, 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 wait. twelve eighty by eight hundred. Yep, 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 yep. English helps. It's two hundred sixty-seven millimeters by one hundred seventy-one millimeters, and it's nine point seven millimeters thick. I need a display width or length. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Diagonal. Uh, yes. Two hundred sixty-seven millimeters Convert by one hundred seventy. No. Well, okay, thanks. Then. You always tell me whenever we go for any walks, watch out for millimeters. That's what we, you tell me. That's what you. Regardless, you almost died. <laughs> so, anything, anything else? Did I tell you guys that last summer when I was in Yellowstone, I was uh, we were, we were at the like ice cream place that's at the main tourist area I in don't Yellowstone. Think I heard about this. And I saw a guy that with a T-shirt on that said Firefox OS. That's so cool. Did you take a picture? I oh, you didn't, didn't have a phone back. Have then. a phone back. Yeah, then. I didn't write. Yeah. Yeah. You had the camera, though. You had the nice camera. Ah, uh, I don't think I... Oh, my God. I could have... <gasps> Dang it! That's uh, what you use cameras for. Uh, now I know! I don't remember like, if I... On the other hand, I had my next five. I could have ran up to the guy with Google Glass and taken his picture. Oh, at Target? His can group? I take a picture? <laughs> You're taking mine. I can take yours. <laughs> we were fought, chasing this guy down in Roseville Target. I heard all like, about it. That was bad. Were you guys like stalking him from the next row over? We yes, followed him all around the store. His girlfriend was watching us watch him. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. And you know, we just had hot dogs and buns probably in our cart, so. so we did. Creepy. Yeah. Like I started chasing. Like, why are we doing it? Like, look at the guy. Look at the guy. Oh my god! He's Google Glasses. <laughs> So just like that. Yeah, yeah, was and you. you know, nobody's going to do that with the Intel Jarvis. No. no. Repel. <laughs> Stay away. So, this CES, I think we coined our new theme, which is not the Internet of Things. It's definitely not that. It's the middle 85%. Middle, middle 85 of things. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's got to be a term for that, but I don't know what it is. I think it makes perfect sense. It's it does. the topmost part of your box and whisker plot. <laughs> Darn, I don't want to think about that. But your so, little crotile never does. No, it does not. So, what do you think, uh, of all the products that were announced here at CS, do you think many of them will uh, actually happen this year? Most years at CS, things announced don't actually happen. Last year, we did get a Firefox phone. We did. Like, LG started, one. started making one. One Firefox phone. No, in the US. no, no. The ZTE. Open. Open. And then we had the uh, that's LG one that's coming out. Yeah, the, what is that one called? Two. LG. It's open, just, open two? I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, I think the, the Steam machines are definitely coming. Yep. Um, Firefox, mostly hardware. Be- yeah, I think More Project board. Christine actually has a chance of becoming a thing, but it's not going to be mainstream. Nah, mm, no, I don't know. I mean, the Razer Edge, no, it has is not mainstream. Never mind. Never mind. So, do you think 4K TVs will uh, be bigger this year? Like, do you think normal people will be able to buy them yet? No, they're still too expensive. Well, it's thousand dollars for a TV. Vizio launched. Really good, you know, better than, you know, they're 60 uh, megahertz or, you know, 60 hertz. I don't know. Yeah, hertz. Yeah, <laughs> not megahertz. <laughs> Oops. Oh, my God. That's fast. No, 60 hertz uh, 4K panels, and they're only okay. $1,000 for 40 inches. That's amazing. That's really cheap. Like, my TV that we just I bought. I should buy that and just use it as a monitor. My TV that I just bought was um, 799 and then we got our Target discount, so it was uh-huh. 700 Fine, then. And uh, so, and that's a regular 1080p display, but it was 55 inches. But still, I would much rather take 4K over size. Yeah, yeah. Not really, but you know, okay, fine. And the 70 inch model is 2100, I believe. Mm-hmm. So you know, the prices are pretty aggressive for 4K now. I guess my my view, my my understanding of normal people is kind of skewed because all of the normal people that I have ever known still have like tube TVs in their right, house, of course. Um. And that's mostly based off of my family and the Decker family. Mm-hmm. We go through TVs quite fast here, but yeah, yeah, I have no what part in that. You guys still have two TVs, right? No, um, we only have three now. Uh, we do have one flat panel now. Wow. Uh, 
multiple uh, TVs. But so my, mine's I got a 26 inch. Uh, so my flat panel is 26. But he says that's not even a. It's like a monitor. That's smaller than my monitor. Yeah. But does, our main TV is 26. It's inches. so tiny. Wow. But it plays Mario Kart. So mine could play Mario Kart, but I would have to use a Wii for that. Dude, it's fine. I hate going over to college students' houses who have like these tiny, tiny 720p TVs, and I'm like, oh, 720. Mine's 1080p. Good. That's good. Yeah. 720 is just unacceptable, especially when they're about the size of my monitor, and I'm like, huh, huh, can we just go back to my place? And we'll, that's what like, you tell everyone, don't you? What? Yeah, I just want to take everybody <laughs> back to my place. Uh-huh. Here, go sit on my bed. We'll watch something. Yeah, sure. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> that's not where that was going. Hey Ryan, have you ever thought about being more than just friends? Yes. Oh, good. All the time. Your <laughs> podcaster. That's what I thought of. Uh, that, okay. Network associates. Coworkers, right? Ne- my phone has this location yeah, set as my workplace. <laughs> you told me that's so great. You're going to change that eventually, right? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to set home back to Morris when you go back. It, it is. It, it has been set at Morris. So, what do you have home now at? What do, you, what do you what do you, what do you call your current house? I mean, I don't. You don't. It's it's nothing special on Why? my map because I'm only here like for a month over winter break. You're only this here is, for like three hours. This is a trip. This is a vacation trip for me. Yeah. Like my yeah. At the end of the month, you know, mm-hmm. when it when it had when I have like a Google um monthly uh, report yeah, thing, thing, it it says you took a trip to St. Paul this month, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> That's great. I guess I don't look at that very often because it's just f- filled with boring statistics that aren't useful i it is interesting to see which months my you know email counts go up and down mm-hmm. but other than that yeah. yeah my email went way down yeah well uh so uh good cs good yeah like it i did yeah was there enough stuff i have no idea we didn't go no, yeah no hmm. i didn't even pretend to go well i tried yeah you did try mm-hmm. denied yeah you were denied I looked at how much it would cost. It was actually cheaper to fly this year. Nice. Yeah. Well, oh, versus truck. Ah. Like, uh... Like no, last year it was 400 for tickets. Now this year it was only 250 Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me probably on my blog at uh, enrbuck.blogspot.com. Uh, also, I'm on Google+. Plus. That's where I post most of my stuff. And uh, how about you over there? You can find me at methpetrol.com. You can also send me an email at yourdreamguy at nexuslabs.org. Really? Still going with that, huh? Yeah. And remember, when you type in the Nexus Labs, make sure there's a dash, because I'm dashing. That's right. And of course, you can find me, uh, Ryan Rampersett, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course, on the Google+, Plus, which is where none of this CES stuff was posted at all for any reason. Well, no, since we put this together in a day. Well, when I was watching the uh, keynotes, I was just tweeting about them. I didn't have links, because I was just watching the Verge keynotes. Mm-hmm. Like, they did live streaming, but then they also well, had uh You were live videos. tweeting a thing that you weren't at. Yeah. Nice. Well, being it more, counts. It does. Nobody but, knows. Well, nobody knows. Like, How come nobody live Google Pluses things? Well, because the system yeah. isn't set up for that. We can talk about that later. Hey, tell uh, me. I got a quick question for you. Like, how often do people plus one your items on the Google Plus? Uh, Ryan plus one's most of them. Okay. Yeah. As long as they're good. If they're if they happen to be a comment on a YouTube uh, video, I get lots of plus ones, which actually means that I get lots of likes on you know the YouTube video. And nice. how many re- retweets do you get? None. You don't, you don't get retweeted? Retweeted? No, I don't know anybody. Right. Twitter isn't set up for retweeting like that. But Google Plus is. Yeah, it, they, they, they make that a primary interaction. Yeah. Hmm. But, on the other hand, I feel like the uh, retweets mean a lot more, and the plus ones mean a lot less. Yeah, well, but they also have reshares, which right. happen occasionally. Which also mean a lot less, because on Twitter, to retweet something, it's a lot more work. Is it? I think so. Like, I feel like a retweet on Twitter is much more valuable than a reshare on Google Plus. Don't you for a retweet you don't uh, add any more information, no. right? No. On a reshare you ha- you can type in your you own could, thing up there. But you can also do that on a retweet too if you want to. Oh really? Yeah. There's oh, the okay. traditional style and the new style. Oh, I'm so kind of educated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a good CES. Good start to 2014. Good start to 2014. The 85 percent. Yes, this year. is the 85 percent episode. Now, Mid 85 percent. Yes, right, right, right. Well, have a good one. So this this makes upgrading easy peasy lemon squeezy for your middle 85%.